Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, yeah, so I work, uh, I'm CTO and uh, co-founder at Washio. Um, so we do laundry and dry cleaning delivery. Um, so basically like Uber, but for laundry and dry cleaning. So um, I'm going to talk today about how we built an iOS and Android app loader um, that kind of replaces test flight for us. Um, and I kind of want to get into like why we did that. So the big thing with us is that we have a lot of different people that uh, use our apps. So we, of course, have like the customer facing app, um, which you can place your order, you can view the status of the driver and things like that. And then we have drivers on the road. So our, um, a lot of our drivers use Android, a lot of our customers use iOS. So we have an interesting split where some of our apps are important on one platform, some are more important on the other in terms of numbers. Um, but so we have to support a lot of apps. So we also have a cleaner app. So we run a drop shop uh, where all the drivers will take the orders to. And then um, we do a lot of processing there, but then a cleaner will actually come and pick up things. And they actually all run mostly iPad minis, uh, but they also run it from their phone where they could send us a rejection or a discrepancy and things like that. Um, and then we have kind of, we have a QA app, which is kind of, mail. this is an older uh, demo or presentation, but the QA app and cleaner app have kind of become one. And then we have an admin app that's kind of like the full CRM. So you could look up any customer and things like that. Um, so multiple environments. So we want to be, we need to have something that we could test things on dev and staging. And because this is such a real time system, it's very important. Um, it's not just like releasing an app that somebody is like consuming content and things like that. We're releasing an app that like when a driver gets into a geo fence of the house, it triggers, you know, a text message to a customer and the customer is looking at the app and it gets updated automatically and things like that. So this is kind of just another view of like, you guys are probably familiar with like different branches on GitHub um, of the apps. Okay, so why was test flight not a good solution? The main reason it was just really terrible to use is that say you have the production app on your phone and then you want to test something on dev, you'd go to test flight and you'd grab the dev build and then it would overwrite the um, production app and now you'd have to be flipping back and forth um, and so when there's a lot of different people testing things and using it it's just really cumbersome so what's really nice about this is that you can have and on my phone I have you know like three at any one time three versions of like the client app the driver app the cleaner app and then any branches that somebody's working on so if they're creating a new cool feature on the customer app for like taking pictures of your clothes with a stain on it so that like we could like move that process down to the customer. Um, we can have a branch of that and you could actually be running that simultaneously on your phone. Um, yeah, so all the branches in one place. Um, and then because we're doing um, the driver apps and the cleaner apps, we don't have to submit through the iOS store, which is really great. And what it enables us to do is to have S3 links that we can um, send to the drivers uh, to update. So if they haven't, like, they can get an automatic update notification in their app, but they could also go to like a little web page that they just press a button and it installs it. Um, and then everything's the same on Android and iOS. So how did we do it? Uh, it's using GitHub, Circle, CI, and then just a little bit of Python to uh, actually run it. Um, Circle CI is a continuous integration tool, so you could use the same thing with like Jenkins or things like that. Um, and yeah, so the, the beauty of it is that anytime somebody pushes something to GitHub, so if you push to the development branch, this whole process runs, it creates the uh, build and puts it out there onto S3 and we have then notifications as well. So like hip chat room will get a notification that and with the link to be able to download the new version. Um, the other aspect of it is that we have a actual um, app loader app on both 
devices on the iOS and Android side that you can go into it, you can grab any um, repo that you want, so like the client or driver, and then you can look through and grab any branch that you want and install it onto your phone. Um, so how does the process work? So the first thing is that you just push to GitHub. Um, and let's see, so is it connected to Circle CI? No, then keep coding. Uh, if it is connected to Circle CI, then this is where it like kicks off uh, these scripts, uh, which are basically just some Python scripts running on the Circle CI box. Um, it does some special things for the master branch. Um, if it is the master branch, then it doesn't change anything with the app name and identifier. Uh, but if it's any other branch, what it will do is it will actually change the name of the app automatically. So on your phone, you'll have like the Washio app, but then you also have Washio Dev or Washio, and then whatever the branch name is, um, which is really nice. Uh, and then, yeah, so and then it goes through JSON settings. Uh, so let's see, it will run tests then for you, um, and then it basically creates the uh, APK or the iOS app and puts it onto S3. Um, and then we're using uh, Firebase as well, so it will actually, I mean, we're using it for a lot of different things, but uh, it's basically a Mongo uh, data store that has pub sub, so you can um, bind to it and then get any updates on things. So let's see, and then we'll post it to a HipChat room. Um, so here you can see like our Android driver repo, um, and then like these are all the branches. So like I said, you can just go to the app and click on any one of these, and you'll have that version installed on either iOS or Android immediately. Uh, this is just a screenshot of uh, Circle CI. So this is kind of all the steps that are involved. Uh, I won't go too far into it, but. Um, it's just, it's just you know standard uh, continuous integration, um, and then okay. So this is where what will happen is when it builds, it will actually push to Firebase. And you can see this is Mongo, and this will give us like what the current versions are. Um, and then within S3, you'll see that it will create the um, the IPA file, and then this index file basically just has a button on it that triggers, lets you install it. And so it's nice to, let's see, yeah. Um, so on the, the right side is our backend system. Um, and this is like all of our apps. So what's nice is that if our customer service center gets a call from a driver and they're like, I don't have the app for whatever reason, um, we can just send them the link right from there. Uh, this is kind of what it would look like. Um, so you can see here's our driver app and then here's our, uh, customer apps with all different branches and things like that. And then this is the actual admin or the app loader um, where you can see you can select which uh, repo you want to connect to. Uh, and so if we start building a new app or anything like that, you can just add that repo to this and it will automatically get it. And then you have the dev staging and master and then any other branches that you might have. So like some of them have a ton, um, but we have them just kind of categorized like that. Um, and then another part of our backend CRM um, is that you can actually see uh, up here like what uh, version everybody's running. So um, if a customer calls in or a driver has an issue and things like that, um, our backend system can kind of see all versions. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You said that you uh, can text or email uh, links uh, to S3 build to the drivers or to people who don't have to go to the app. Um, yeah. If you email them, like, let's say, an S3 link to an Apple build, would they need to do anything special on their phone to like they w Yes. And that actually, I think it's in the newest version, like iOS 9, um, I think is when it happened, that you have to go into your provisioning. Um, you have to set up your enterprise, allow enterprise, 
uh, of Washio to to that phone. You didn't use to. You could before just install the link, but that's kind of the only like caveat that they do have to accept um, it under. There's like a enterprise settings type of thing. So you distribute it under an Apple inter enterprise account. Yes. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, which is really nice. I mean, because we get to skip the App Store for almost everything, except for the customer app, of course. But you know, because the store's a pain. But so just to follow up on that, you can just download it from you know link, and then when you try to open that app, the phone will say, "Hey, you can download this from the internet. You have to go to settings and trust this." Trust that source, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and the, yeah, and the provisioning of that will expire, so we ran into that as well. And then what happens is, if you have the app on your phone and you've already accepted it, it'll keep running, but if you release a new version, um, at that point, it will try to update and then crash out, and then you don't have the app on your phone anymore. So that's kind of, yeah, that was a, a hairy little thing. We had to, I get, like whatever certificate you have to put out there um, had expired. So like your enterprise certificate will expire, so they won't be able to trust it at that point. Um, but they, the app will continue working, but then when you put out a new build, which is of course what we did, and then all of a sudden like, our, uh, you just have to re-release the enterprise certificate, um, and then they'll be able to go into the general settings and it will appear. So like Washio appears there, and then every app that we have has its own like certificate. It's a pain, but. And before that didn't happen at all. Like before it was like, you could just release it and anybody can install it. And it's for Android, it's, you know, you trust it and you put that you allow. You have to allow, yeah, apps that are not in the, from the Google Play Store to be downloaded. So kind of like on a Mac, how you have to allow downloaded apps to be installed. Yeah. Okay. On iOS, I thought I remember reading that you can only have one company's enterprise certificate on your device at a time. Is that true, or was I misreading that? One company's enterprise. I mean, if I had Washio, I couldn't have another company? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't. Okay. So oh, I maybe. Just want to read that somewhere. OK. You're up there, no? okay. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure where actually. Oh yeah, you could, yeah. Yeah, it's under settings general and then device management. Watch is the only one I have, so that could be true. I don't know. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. So do you use uh, Firebase? Do you use that in the customer app as well? Yeah, we use it like everywhere. Um, it's, I mean, it's so great. So we, yeah. So like when a driver, you know, hits a geofence, we update it in Firebase, and then uh, the customer would see it in real time and things like that. So, and we're using it for chat as well. So um, customers can, we send out automated text messages when your order's coming and things like that, and you've used it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, if you reply back to that, it actually comes through our system and then go, goes into Firebase, so our uh, call center can actually see it in the dashboard and things like that, and reply from there, and then it sends it out as a text. Uh, so yeah, Firebase is awesome. Do you use a particular service for push notifications, or? We have our own. Um, we have our own, and then we also use Mixpanel for like uh, marketing ones. Yeah. Do you use Firebase for all of your data, or do you have a relational database that? Yeah. So the way I've, the way it's architected is that Firebase acts as like this caching server. So when you like place an order, we save that off to Postgres and things like that. But then we save order information to Firebase and we save it to Redis um, just for the internal API. And then we save it to Algolia um, for searching um, indexes. Uh, so 
And at any one point, like Firebase could be out of sync and we can do a refresh and it will pull from Postgres again and refresh it. So you could, you could definitely use it. Um, I just prefer to have a SQL database for any kind of analytic stuff. So we kind of did this hybrid where it's both ways. And the data is modeled differently then too, which is nice. So we can model however we want for any of these. And we just have a bunch of different parsers. So an order looks 10 different ways in our system, depending on which service it's going out to. So you said that you created in for each branch. Yes. Uh, let's say if your developer has fork of main branch, did you create four branches in this fork as well? Uh, no, four? not right just now. Just for main? Ju yeah, just the, off the like main repo. Okay, um, um, with the app identifier, nice. or they so they get different app identifiers. Um, so you have a bunch of different applications file in your uh, developer profile. Um, I'm not quite sure. Okay, I, so I think that, so. I think. You need to create in yeah. Well, so these this is just for internal use. Mm -hmm. So it's just being used on enterprise. So like we never submit them to. So like having whatever the identifiers are don't really matter as far as okay. yeah. Um, if I mean we'd have to like we don't have like an issue of like. Um, Victorious, where they want to release hundreds of apps to the app store at once. Mm -hmm. Ours is kind of like a totally different thing where it's like, we just want to look at tons of different versions of a lot of different apps um, for each, yeah, internally. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know if they've released it yet, but we're like on a like hidden type of thing where we have like the capability. So we we've been using Firebase for a long time. I know the founders, and um, they they have a way to kind of just uh, snapshot it to S three, um, but I can't remember if they released it. And if not. Um, it should be coming out soon, but that, so yeah, that, I mean, that is one of the things and that's why we went the caching route and uh, because, yeah, I mean, cause if you've ever worked with Mongo, Mongo's great until like, um, you know, until the board needs 200 reports and then you have to like have engineers writing SQL queries, but in JavaScript, you know, it's like, it's madness. So, you know, we, you, uh, we do the Postgres thing because we can add, we use Chartio. And so we have, you know, hundreds of reports that are, you know, basic SQL queries that it's a little just cumbersome in Mongo. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you.